Welcome back DIYers. Today we're working on a 2015 Subaru Forester 2.5L. In this video we'll be doing an oil change and here we have all the parts and tools that you'll need in order to do it. All of the parts, fluid capacities, and specifications will be in the description below and if you like any of the tools I'm using those will be linked as well. Let's get started on this oil change guide. For SUVs I like using car ramps. SUVs already have enough height so the car ramps basically provide just a couple more inches for you to get underneath and do everything you need to do. We'll need to pop the hood in order to service this car. The hood release is located inside the vehicle right here on the left side. Simply pull and you'll hear the hood release. While we're here, we're going to set the e-brake as well. Underneath the car, just to be extra safe, we're going to put a jack stand right on the control arm. We'll also put wheel chocks behind the rear wheels. These are homemade from just leftover wood. And at the front of the car, right about here, there's one more safety latch before the hood can come up. The hood is on a strut, and it should stay up by itself. And here in the engine bay, the oil cap is located here. Let's remove that, so I can show you that the oil specifications are located on the cap, and you can see that it's a 0W20 weight. The engine oil filter is also located up top, which I really like. It really makes it easy to change. The dipstick to check the oil level is located here on the left side. And we'll take that out to get a quick peek at what the oil level is before we change it. What we're looking for is clear oil that doesn't look cloudy or discolored, which could be a sign of bigger engine problems that you'll want to have a professional take a look at. In this car's case, the oil isn't even making it on the dipstick, which means that it's burning oil. That kind of makes sense though, because this car has over 100,000 miles. While being a quart low on oil isn't an ideal situation, the best we can do is proceed with the oil change and let the owner know that they should monitor the situation moving forward. From the top of the car, we'll head underneath so that we can find the location of the drain plug. And we're in luck. This car doesn't have a skid plate and there's actually an opening where the drain plug is located. Here's a better angle so that you can see exactly where that drain plug is. To remove the drain plug, we're going to use my favorite 3 8 flex head ratchet from GearWrench. We'll also need a 17 millimeter socket. With that, we can break the drain plug loose and then spin the rest off by hand so that we don't get oil on the ratchet. Make sure you're mindful as to which direction the oil is going to come out and adjust your drain pan if you need to. This will take 5 to 10 minutes to fully drain, but we'll zoom on ahead. Once the oil stops dripping, we could take the drain bolt and put it back in. I do recommend replacing the crush washer on the drain plug, but in our case it was looking okay. I'll make sure to include parts numbers for that in the description below. The drain bolt needs to be tightened to 31 foot-pounds. Here I'm using a torque wrench, but if you don't have one, the bolt just needs to be snug. 31 foot-pounds is not that much. Now we can remove the oil filter housing, and this filter definitely feels over-tightened. Coincidentally, this aftermarket filter is a perfect fit for my Motivix cap wrench that I use on all my Toyotas. Just to note though, the Subaru OEM filter is actually a little bit bigger and uses a different size cap wrench, and I'll show you that in a second when we prep the new filter. Most of the oil should have drained out of the filter, but that's not always the case as some cars actually keep oil in the filter even if it's upside down. We'll be safe and use a shop towel here. We wouldn't want to leak oil all over the car for no reason. And it looks like we're safe. Now we can prep the new filter, but before we do that, I just wanted to show you again that the aftermarket filter doesn't fit the size that the OEM filter does. Here's the cap wrench for the OEM filter. You can see how it's just a little bit too big and it wouldn't grab the filter very well. And here we have the new filter and the part number is right here. If you didn't know, Walmart actually carries a decent amount of OEM filters. And this is where I picked mine up at. And before we prep the filter, I just wanted to show you the aftermarket filter was definitely smaller and the cap wrench we use doesn't fit. But this larger 65 to 67 millimeter cap wrench does fit. To prep the new filter, we just need a little bit of oil to lubricate the O-ring. We'll do that by just taking some of the oil from the old filter. You don't need new oil for this part, but you can for your own peace of mind. Now, we can screw the new oil filter back into place. The oil filter housing only needs to be on hand tight. Most people try to over tighten this, and it really doesn't need to be tightened that much. You can see what I'm doing here. Once my oily hand can't really grip it anymore, it's pretty much good. With the oil fully drained and the oil filter back on, we can finally begin filling with oil. Today we're using the Kirkland brand from Costco. I actually really like this oil. It's a cost-effective full synthetic that actually meets many manufacturers' standards. But since we know that the car is high mileage and potentially burning oil, the one thing that we are missing with this blend is something for high mileage cars. And that's why we're going to try some Lucas Oil Stabilizer for high mileage cars. I don't usually use these additive products, but in this particular case, because we know that the car is burning oil, 
I did want to try to supplement the Kirkland brand's regular oil with something that could help relubricate the seals on an old engine like this. If I were to do it again, I would just buy a high mileage blend. I'll have some recommendations in the description below. The 2.5 liter engine in the Subaru Forester needs 5.1 quarts of oil. Since the oil stabilizer is one quart, we're going to start with four quarts here. That should bring us to about five quarts total. And from there, we can check the dipstick and top off as needed. As you can see here, the Lucas oil stabilizer is really thick. I can see why at face value, many people would think that this is protecting their engine. I definitely don't know enough about this product to be able to make a recommendation. And I would say, do your own research. Again, for me, this was just a way to get some oil additives for high mileage engines and high mileage engine parts. We didn't quite make it to four quarts earlier, so I'm gonna finish topping off to four quarts and then we'll check the oil level on the dipstick. It's looking pretty good. For me, between the min line and the max line is about one quarter oil. And since I generally don't like to go all the way to the max line, I would say that we're just about perfect. Now we can start finishing up. First, we'll make sure that we clean up all of our spills. We'll also clean off the oil cap and re-lubricate it, since there is a rubber o-ring that seals the cap. Let's also get the car level again by taking it off the ramps. We'll first remove the jack stand that we put in for safety, and also the wheel chocks. Then we can drive the car down the ramp. After letting the car idle for a little bit, we'll check the oil level one final time. And here, it looks like the oil level did drop a little bit, so we're gonna top it off with just a little bit of oil, and we'll call it done. And that's it. I hope you like this oil change video for a 2015 Subaru Forester 2.5L. I make videos like this every week, so if you found this video helpful, please consider liking and subscribing. It really helps out the channel. I also have guides for other cars, so if you just happen to have a Toyota Highlander or a Volkswagen Passat or a Mini Cooper, those videos should be popping up now. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Alan, and this is Metal Group. I'll see you next time.